Hey everyone, it's Ryzen. Welcome back to uh, Let's Play Wild Arms 3. Well, today we're gonna do some stuff. No, no, I uh, got everybody's MTC up to 5. Um, at this point, really, growth eggs should be enough to cover the rest of the MTC levels for the rest of the game. Um, I am aware that if you get someone's MDC above 16, you can buy growth eggs. However, that is not needed at all. Really, five summons for each character is more than you'll ever need. Yeah, getting up to 99 MTC is just more than overkill. You're never going to summon that much. Not that summoning isn't good in this game. In fact, it's very good. It's easily the best summons in any Wild Arms games, but... Well. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's head over to Kadangle. I, uh, I did... No, I didn't buy the world screen yet. Let's go ahead and do that. And, uh, I'll show how that works in a second. I also bought a bunch of medicines and, uh, antidotes, because we'll need those. Got a bunch of dark gems. You need to get the Dark Gems now, because the Andro Seal is only a temporary item, so yeah. I did win a few Mini Carrots, which was kind of nice. Unusual, but I'll take it. And uh, be sure to say hello to the drunk people by the river, because there's a bunch of drunk people who are shouting. Hopefully the train doesn't run them over that's coming through right now. Uh... There we go. Sorry, my notes wouldn't scroll down. I'm uh, testing something new with my notes. I'm trying to just keep them on my computer so I don't have to uh, print them all out. Anyway, uh, Kadingle is over here. Ooh, what's that? That looks interesting. Ah, we'll uh, we'll deal with that later. Ooh, that is a actually overshot Kadingle. This is Kadingle. Fortunately, it is not as intimidating as it was in Wild Arms 1, or Ultra Code F, whichever version you play. Okay, um, if you have Disease Ward, which I do, uh, you might want to equip that, and uh, Poison Ward is also pretty good here. Any elemental protection? No. No, no, you shouldn't need any uh, elemental protection here. So let's, uh, let's head on through. So, uh, yeah. Oh, first battle already. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Anna Burgess. We've already fought these guys before. It's a formation I don't have listed either. Whatever, they're weak to ice, so, uh... Oh, I can't Mystic yet. That's right. Um, so I'll just stick with this, uh... this, uh... medium setup. I got a little tongue-tied there. Tongue-tied. Tongue-tied. And we'll cast Refrigerate, and uh, Jet and Clive will take out the one in the middle there. An Ice Gem should be enough to take him out at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I figured. I don't know if I showed this off, but uh, in Claiborne, uh, Pike is actually in the town there. I'll show that off later, if I haven't already. Oh, I still got the battle set to uh, turbo speed there. I'll have to fix that. That's why that thing drains so quickly. Let's turn that back to normal. Let's head on uh, through the door. Okay, we got a puzzle here. Pretty simple puzzle, really. Just a uh, very basic block puzzle. Let's just make a uh, bridge. Portal, this is not. <laughs> ah, well. Let's, uh, let's move that up. I like the puzzles in Wild Arms. There's a lucky card. Uh, well, two of them. That'll be actually quite useful. And let's, uh, well, let's head through that room now.
Ah, new enemies, Gagasins. Yep, yep, very, very good time to summon. I don't really care what the others, what the others do. I guess technically an Earth Gem, but yeah, um, just summon Terror Roar. They're all dead. Simple enough. Uh, let's see what they can do. Actually, my notes here. Um, what are they called? Gagasins. Yeah, they can. Well, they can waste a turn. They can steal from you and escape. Uh, they're just no, no. That's Portsons. What am I looking at? Uh, let's see. Gagasins. Ooh, they drop Hazel Springs. Uh, they just attack you physically. Whatever. But yeah, they can disease you. Ooh, and, and they can uh, use the decelerate debuff on you. Which halves, your, halves of the target's uh, reflex. Nothing really interesting other than the disease that they can inflict on you. But that's why I brought medicines. I knew I brought him for some reason. And we've got a little... Ooh. Little, um... Stairway there. Nothing really remotely interesting about that. Oh, did I leave? No, I didn't want to do that. All I did was turn. What the hell? Let's step on this uh, little switch here. Head on up this little annoying elevator thing. I, this is one of the only times the game does this, thankfully. Uh oh, impuses. These guys are annoying, um, if I remember right. Right, I want to actually switch my medium setup for these guys. Let's, uh, let's move, uh, Gale Claw over to Gallows. And that's really it. Um, because they are weak to Thunder. So, got a Thunder Gem. We'll take that. We'll have, uh, Gallows cast, uh, Inspire. Simple stuff, really. Kind of lost my place a bit in my notes, but yeah, whatever. Be much easier if I had a, another computer, but eh, whatever. Got a couple more thunder gems, and uh, let's switch our medium setup back to what it normally is. And of course, every time you switch mediums, yeah. You gotta do that, unfortunately. What can Impusas do that are at all interesting? Anything? I don't know. Uh, we got a Duplicator, a Gimma Coin, and a Gela Card. Uh, three of them, which is quite nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, Impusas are interesting. They can use, uh, this is why they're annoying, um, their Gimlet attack is just normal physical damage, but they have an attack called HP Robber, and the problem is, is that it equals Impusa's max HP minus current HP, and that's why you really want to focus on one at a time, unless you know you're going to one-shot them. That's why I really give uh, Gallows the Inspire spell there. Really important to do that. And a Thunder Gem from uh, Virginia. I suppose that technically, you technically wouldn't want Jet to attack, because I don't think he can finish one off, but... Well, maybe he can. Depends on your level, I suppose. But, you know, one getting an HP robber on me with uh, low HP, that's fine. Two or three, that's not. Now, yeah, this is a bit annoying, but, eh, it's okay. Let's, uh... Head on up top here. Okay, let's keep going. So I suppose you're all probably wondering about how my new job is going. It's okay, except for uh, the annoying fact that they try to call me in on every single day off I have. So annoying. 
Oh, we got a unexpected boss fight. Kind of reminds me of the old early Final Fantasy games, but eh, whatever. Thanks for spoiling it. Anyway, this is Trask, or Turask, or however you want to translate it, depending on which Wild Arms game you're playing. It's, uh... What, what, what would you call it? Um, Kind of like a... Tonberry in Final Fantasy, or... Some other famous... Or Cactar, or something. It's a... It's a Wild Arms, uh... Famous tradition monster. I don't know. Anyway, this guy's actually quite interesting, so... First, uh, make sure that you got Poison Ward, because this guy can poison you with um, Toxic Breath. Poison a single target, and he's got a, a, and his only attack is Big Press, which is just, it's not too bad. It's just weak physical damage, but his counter attack is Bio Missile, which he counters against uh, any magic that you throw at him. I don't think he counters gems with it, but... No, I think he does. I think it's any magic attack. He counters the attacker with um, Bio Missile, so you want to stick with physical attacks, but the problem is, is that this guy has um, really powerful physical attacks, so... or physical defense. It's max, actually. Yeah, it's 999, and you're not going to break through that. Even with Fragile, he'll still have over 500 defense. He'll still have 499 defense, I think. Maybe 500. Um, depending on how it rounds. I don't remember how it rounds how it rounds an odd number being divided by two. Probably up. But um yeah. Let's start by casting uh shield on Clive. And let's get turbulence on as well, just because we can. And I'll analyze just to show something off and uh do I wanna cast fragile? It's not yet. Yeah, yeah, get fragile on him. It works all the time. So does Decelerate if you want to give that a try. But let's uh, let's buff ourselves up here. Trask, not too difficult really. Just you got to know how to beat him. He has every uh, element, by the way. Yeah, a lot of Gala. That's that's nice. Nice, he targeted uh, Clive. Okay. Let's, uh... God, those people are annoying outside. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Let's, uh... Let's take a look at it. It's one of the more interesting things about this battle system. I can manually order the turn order. Now, for this turn, I want Virginia to go before Clive and Gallows. But I want Clive and Gallows to go in the order that... In, so that Clive goes before Gallows. Now, in doing this, watch. Jet is really fast, right? But he's going last. So let's see what happens. First, let's get shield on... The reason why I want Virginia going first is to get shield on Gallows, who doesn't have it right now. I want Jet to throw a Gala card on this guy. I want Gallows to cast Refrigerate. And Clive to cast Cremate. Let's see what happens. Jet has more reflex than, uh... Oh, they all have more reflex than him. Darn. I guess I can't show that off. Um, basically, Clive's reflex is all that would matter in that situation. After Virginia's turn. So if Trask was faster than Clive, even though Jet is faster than Clive, because Jet has to go after Clive's turn, Jet would automatically go after the boss as well. Basically. If the boss was faster than Clive. And he counters, of course, with Bio Missile, but because I put Shield up, it's not that bad. And now that we casted uh, Cremate and then immediately on the same turn Refrigerate, we heated up his armor and then cooled it down and uh, we cracked it open, actually. Alright. I like that. Nice little bit of strategy introduced into uh, this boss fight. And Gallows uh, would have taken over 100 damage there if it wasn't for shield. 
And another bit of an issue is I don't want to finish this guy off quite yet, so I got enough mini carrots. Um, no, no, let's not waste it. You can also go ahead and move uh, Fiery Rage over to Gallows at this point for uh, Devastate, but I just realized that Gallus doesn't even have the needed FP for that. I'm not going to put Critical Hit on because I need to build some FP. Yeah, even Virginia's doing over 100. Excellent. I shouldn't kill him in just one turn. Attacks here. Nice shooting, Clive. Just a, I'm just gonna ignore the poison because this guy is not that challenging. Once you, once you figure out how to actually damage the guy, let's go ahead and uh, get poison ward up there. Well, then of course let's mystic a. Oh, just so you know, uh, every turn, it re it, uh, the turn order defaults back to reflex order. So if you need to do change the turn order every turn, it does get kind of annoying, and I wish there was an option to save it, but it's a minor gripe with the battle system. Honestly, I wish more games would let you alter your character's turn order like that. Because that could be quite useful for certain strategies, but whatever. Wild Arms 3 is like the only game I know that lets you do that, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I really like that about the game. Let's go with Lucky Card and uh, shoot. And let's cast Devastate, because that'll be quite powerful. And let's finish this guy off. Devastate is going to be really powerful against this guy. Um, Gallows is going to take a counterattack, but really, I don't care. Yeah, he's still under Fragile's effect. Oh, I analyzed him because I wanted to show that off, but I probably won't be able to now. Yeah, look at that damage. Oh well, I'll show it off on a different enemy. I was just going to show that thing where, um, if you're, sl if you're, when you put the cursor over the enemy you've analyzed, you can see their, uh, buffs and debuffs and stuff like that. But, whatever. And we win a Moonstone for that. That's a guaranteed drop. Yeah, that's a nice amount of Gala there. 6,000. Or, I'm sorry. 3,000. 1,500 normally. So, yeah, you can double that. So that's twice as much as a Lucky Card could sell. So, I think it's worth it there. And whoa, what's this? Well, we won't deal with that for a long time. In fact, you can't. We need a certain tool for that. Ah, crap. Let's uh, let's head up these uh, stairs here. And uh, that'll be it for the episode. We're approaching 20 minutes, so. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to make a quick announcement here. Or quick update. Uh, the reason why these updates have been a little slow is it's YouTube's fault. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but every time I try to upload a video, it fails multiple times. Uh, episode 14 failed four times. Episode 15 failed five times. And by failed, you know, half the time I cancel them because it, it tells me ridiculous things like 1,100 minutes remaining, which I know is just BS. I have a faster internet connection than that. I know upload speeds are much slower than download speeds, but come on, it's not. I've I've tested my down my upload speed. It's not the fastest in the world, but it ain't that slow. I mean, it takes about an hour to upload a, a 300 megabyte video for me, and I got YouTube sitting here telling me all of a sudden it takes 16 hours, which there's no way. And even if I let it like upload like that. At the end of the, the 10 hours or so, 10 hours in, it'll just say, oh, unknown error. It, really irritating. But whatever. Hopefully that gets sorted out. And uh, well, I hope you continue to watch this series. This is Ryzen signing off of this episode. Have a great day.